What's going on guys? My name is Mike Barker and in this video we're going to do a quick overview and review of the Asus Zenbook Pro Duo laptop. I'm a photographer, videographer, designer, and cab manager for a civil engineering firm just south of Denver, Colorado. So needless to say, I require a pretty powerful laptop for the things I have to do for work and for my passive income side hustles. As a professional designer, I am definitely no stranger to computers, so I do have a little background in what to look for while shopping for a new machine. I've also built like a million computers. This video, however, is all about choosing a laptop with plenty of options and computing power for the crazed, sleep-deprived, multitasking designer on the go. That's you and me. I've been doing this kind of stuff for a long time. So I know right off the bat what will work and what will not work for me. I personally needed a very powerful laptop computer and this little guy fit the bill. I searched all over the internet for about three months before settling on this one. I bought this back in January 2021 so I've been using it for just about a year and I can honestly attest to its strengths and its weaknesses. So let's dive in. As I stated in the intro, this is the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. Why do they call it the Duo, you ask? Well, that's because this little bad boy features dual monitors. Yes, two touchscreen monitors on a laptop. As I mentioned before, I'm a designer and I've worked professionally for almost 20 years. And in every position I've ever held, I've had a dual monitor set up. It's vital to my workflow and this laptop offers it, which is kind of rare and pretty awesome. It's a pretty cool selling point for working professionals, designers, photographers, and video editors. Next, let's talk about power. In addition to needing two monitors, I need a lot of power. I run AutoCAD, 3D Studio Max, Pix4D, Global Mapper, and Muck 3D. I use the entire Adobe suite. I edit 4K video in Premiere Pro and After Effects. I edit audio in Audition, and I edit high resolution photography in Lightroom and Photoshop. All of this software that I need in my day to day, and this version of the ZenBook Pro Duo can run them all, and at the same time, no less. <sighs> on a laptop, come on, how is that even possible? Well, for starters, it has a two terabyte solid state drive which is essential for storing all of my software installs and project files, and for setting up a nice fast scratch disk for all the Adobe software, which is an absolute necessity for my work. Plus it has 32 big fat gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. You know you gotta have all the RAM you can get in your machine in our line of work. I mean, my personal workstation at home has 64 gigs of RAM, and my workstation at work has 128 gigabytes of RAM. So getting only 32 gigabytes of RAM in this laptop was kind of sad, but honestly, I haven't been disappointed. It's still a lot of RAM. Secondly, this laptop is rocking an Intel Core i9-9980HK 2.4 gigahertz processor. That's eight cores, man. Ninth gen Intel with up to five gigahertz boost and a 16 megabit spark cache. I mean, have you ever rendered a 4K exterior night scene with atmospherics and 3D Studio Max at 2 in the morning with an 8 a.m. deadline? This laptop won't let you down. That RAM and processor combo will get your rendering completed just in time to drop it into your PowerPoint presentation and head off to your meeting. Next, the video card. Man, an NVIDIA RTX 2060 6 GB GDDR6 VR ready graphics card is sick. But Mike, what are all those letters and numbers? What does any of that even mean? It means that it is really fast and powerful, and it helps to speed up working with big 3D models in AutoCAD and 3D Studio Max. And I know, I animate conceptual flyovers for massive mining sites for a civil engineering firm. That takes some serious computing power. It's intensive work and this laptop can hang. Also, it comes in pretty handy if you enjoy blasting aliens and racing Formula One cars. A little gaming on the nights and weekends? Do it if that's your thing. Aside from all that fun stuff, I can also edit 4K video in Premiere Pro and After Effects at native resolution. What, on a laptop? Yes, this laptop for sure. 
This thing is the best. And coupled with this beautiful 15.6 inch 4K Ultra HD 16 by nine aspect ratio touchscreen, it is amazing. Stunning really. And then when you add in the second monitor, the screen pad plus as Asus calls it, which is also 4K, you get yourself quite a nice working experience. And you can even turn off the screen pad plus independently from the main monitor if you aren't using it and want to stretch your battery life. So that's pretty nice too. Some other noteworthy features I should definitely list. It comes with an 80211 Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and a 720p HD front-facing camera for gaming and meetings and calls to the family and shooting YouTube videos if you want or whatever else. It has a few ports, two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports for lightning fast data transfer, one HDMI in case you want to plug in an external monitor or project your PowerPoint presentation at your next conference meeting. It has a Thunderbolt 3 Type-C for docking station and a headphone slash microphone combo jack for plugging in and tuning out. One thing it doesn't have, which leaves me a little disappointed being a photographer and a videographer, there's no SD card slot. So you'll need a USB card reader, which kind of sucks, but it's tolerable, I suppose. It has an eight cell lithium ion battery that lasts a fairly good amount of time, depending on what you're doing. A couple, few hours, maybe a little more, but that's okay. Battery life really isn't everything. As long as you're not stranded in the jungle trying to edit 4K video. You can probably just plug in with the 230 watt AC adapter and just go forever. I've traveled all over with this laptop and I'm usually really never more than 10 feet from an outlet. Oh, one big bummer. The premium built-in Harman Kardon speakers are really pretty weak. I'm sure any review you've read will tell you that. They are not loud. They're fine in a quiet room or when you're watching some Netflix to fall asleep at the hotel. But that's about it. I use Bluetooth headphones while I'm working or in a loud and busy place. And I get all the premium sound I need for editing audio and video. So it hasn't been a terrible inconvenience for me, but you might have a different opinion on that. Okay, what else? It comes loaded with Windows 10 Home, which you can upgrade to Windows 11 right away for free if you want, which I've done and I love it. I've had no problems with any of my software or plugins or hardware or the screens working since the upgrade. It's cool. I'm digging it. It comes with Cortana, which I think is being discontinued, and it has Alexa voice recognition, which I like because I have Alexa everything around here. Echo, turn on the office lights. Echo, turn off the office light. Physically, it has this beautiful celestial blue metallic top cover, which is military grade steel, and it's strong, but the finish can and will likely get scratched if you're not super careful. Mine definitely is, and you can see it in the videos. I, and I'm pretty careful with mine, but whatever. Um, size. It's 14.02 inches wide by 8.82 inches deep front to back. It goes from 0.94 inches thick at the hinge to 0.91 inches thick at the front, and it weighs in at a hefty five and a half pounds. So you'd better start working out. It comes with a nice stylus that I rarely use, but it does work well with Photoshop, and that's all I really care to use it for anyway. And it comes with this seemingly useless wrist palm rest thing that I've never used once. It's been in a drawer ever since I unboxed it. The keyboard keys are nice. They're backlit and pleasantly snappy while typing. The mouse pad is responsive and has a cool double feature as a number pad, which as a designer was definitely on my wish list. Um, it has a great this great, it has this great through body cooling feature with a speed control fan. You can turn on and off while rendering imagery or video and it sucks air in from the left and torches anything on the right. So you can use it to heat up your lunch or keep your coffee hot. Along with that feature, it has an interesting lid design that actually lifts the bottom up off of the table surface to allow for additional airflow while you work. And I think that's about all I really have to say about the ZenBook Pro Duo, the good and the bad. So what's good, I'm going to say just about everything. And what's bad, well, I was pretty clear that the crappy speakers are one and they should technically be awesome. I mean, they're Harman Kardon. 
they should be sick. And of course, as I mentioned, the lack of an SD card slot totally sucks, but ideal. Other than that, I love it. And if I didn't just buy it, I might consider buying the newer version, primarily because it has the screen pad plus kind of tips up a bit, so you can see it a little better. It's really not that big of a deal, though. Links to both are in the description below the video. And if you decide to buy one through the link, thank you. I'm an affiliate marketer, and I'll receive a small commission from the sale at no cost to you. Well, I hope this review helped you a little on your research journey as you shop for your next laptop. If you have any additional questions about this computer that I didn't cover here, please feel free to leave me a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you do get this laptop, or any other computer for that matter, and you find yourself looking for design advice or software tutorials or some passive income ideas, feel free to check out my channel. Hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you receive notifications every time I post a new video. Until the next time, my friends, go do something creative.